so welcome welcome everyone we will have a, a question time at the end so please feel free to, to throw those over at any time but today we're going to be talking about PCB design and the mechanical conundrum and what I want you to kind of understand through this presentation is really the inhibitions that um, are around product design today uh, with the methodology today how that affects the workflow for PCB design today from, from PCB to mechanical and vice versa. And then also what, what do we have available to really advance that mechatronic designing, advance, advance that whole process, better outputs, faster time to market and things like that. So my name is Mark Talbot. I'm a senior electrical AE at CATI. Got a master's degree in power electronics and motor design, as well as uh, several years of using the SOLIDWORKS portfolio. Um, and all that means is I'm here to help you in whatever industry um, that you guys fall in. So this is called the mechanical conundrum. You know, what is that? What is the problem anyway? Why are we here? Well, the problem that we see in PCB design um, in industry today is that really a design is a project or product. And to go into a little more detail of what that means is it means that there's going to be multiple contributors and those contributors are going to be using multiple tools, multiple platforms to get that design done. And what this tends to lead to is it leads to a bit of a, a linear workflow. And what I mean by that is I see all the time, you know, uh, board designs being handed over to the mechanical in a near completed state or the other way around. Maybe the mechanical has an assembly that's in near completed state. And that kind of adds a lot of constraints to one or both environments. The other thing is because a project is a project, it needs to be tracked as a project, stored as a project and revised as a project. And when you have a PCB design silo and a mechanical design silo, uh, they really have their own means of, of tracking, revising, and storing that information. And that's really, an those are really inhibitors to the design process, inherent inhibitors. The other problem that we see in industry today is when we're considering PCB design, we tend to focus on PCB design. And we focus on what we can do with PCB design, what tools we have for that. But really, there's more involved in a product than just the board design. And this sounds kind of basic, but the whole idea here is here's a product. I don't even see a board. In other words, there is, there's other people in the room, there's other people this affects, um, and I just wanna broaden that scope beyond just that focus on the board design itself. In this product, we obviously have 3D design, PCB design, and I'm gonna throw uh, data management in there as well. And there can be other people that are involved, uh, but these are the main ones that, that uh, we see. And lastly, I just want to bring up that I, I've seen this a lot where people are, tend to use the wrong software for the task at hand. Uh, a quick example of this, a quality check drawing. You know, this can be done very efficiently in SOLIDWORKS Mechanical. Can, mechanical is very good at making parametric drawings. But the problem is because of the current design workflows that most companies have, where they're exporting information from a PCB tool, pulling that into a mechanical tool, yeah, I can make a drawing off of that, but then the next change comes by and that drawing goes to waste. I have to basically reorient that information because it's not really parametric. I'm getting unique uh, parasolids or step files from another program. And so a lot of people will say, okay, well, if it's too painful to redo that again and again in a mechanical environment, I'll just do that in the PCB environment. And there's no PCB tool out there that is good at that kind of documentation. Um, as SOLIDWORKS Mechanical, for example. And so those are kind of the upfront inhibitions that we have when we talk about PCB design and industry. But the, this webinar is called the Mechanical Conundrum. So what is the Mechanical Conundrum anyway? So the Mechanical Conundrum is the fact that a mechanical individual is responsible for aspects of board design. However, he cannot directly influence those aspects. So I like to, to uh, talk about, just give an example of what this would be like. You know, imagine somebody who's designing a sheet metal part. 
you know, a simple metal part, it has some bends and so on, um, no problem. But what if that mechanical individual, every time he wanted to make a fold or, or locate a flange and so on, what if he had to send an email to somebody else to make that change, to send it back to him so he could view it, and then the next change he wants to make, he has to send an email to somebody else for them to do the work and so on. That sounds ridiculous, but that is literally what's going on in, um, in print circuit board design today. That is to say that the mechanical individual is responsible for things like the board shape, mounting hole locations, maybe length and positioning of rigid flex uh, designing, clearance information, interference with other components, curved enclosures, uh, locating mechanically critical components. So think of LEDs shining through a hole in an enclosure, toggle switches, screens, um, connector locations for harnesses, and so on. The mechanical individual is responsible for all of this information, but they can't make any changes in this information. They see something that needs change, they're taking out a snapshot, pulling up paint, sending an email, they're creating this document that's only purpose is to be reinterpreted by somebody else to make that change for them. Hopefully that change gets interpreted correctly and then the process starts over. We do a new export of a file, a new import of that file, and so on. So in other words, this is really the definition of double work. It's, it's people using email for communication, tapping on the shoulder. There's no real trackability here. Uh, that is the mechanical conundrum. So the question becomes, well, is there a better way? And that's where SOLIDWORKS PCB comes into play. In other words, SOLIDWORKS as a platform has a PCB design product. It can communicate natively. And so let's go ahead and see how we can solve this mechanical conundrum using the SOLIDWORKS suite of products. So I want to start out here in SOLIDWORKS. And there's a PCB add-in, and I can actually create a project from the SOLIDWORKS environment. And that's going to be the first conundrum that we solve here. And that is that a project can span both environments, both the PCB and mechanical environment. I create one project, and both environments see it. I can add information from both environments, and that's going to be able to be seen uh, bidirectionally. The next conundrum that we're going to solve is we're actually going to work with native SOLIDWORKS parts. This is a SOLIDWORKS part. When I created the project, I get a board outline. I can edit that part just like any other SOLIDWORKS part. So no longer am I you know, figuring out a board sketch. I'm sending that off to be um, created into the board itself into a PCB and a PCB tool. Now that can be done natively in SOLIDWORKS. And this process can start in either environment. We can start this in PCB. We can start this in mechanical. But the idea is it's one, product, one project across both environments information can be edited across both environments. So where else can we take this? Well, I can also take mechanical interference information and I can actually send that over to the PCB side as well. So this can be done today. Usually people send off you know, a, a, a native uh, or a neutral file format and that file has to get located and so on. But because this is native in SOLIDWORKS, that's going to be exactly where it needs to be. I can use uh, hole wizards for assembly mounting. I can use um, extruded cuts for, for any complex cut shapes. And all of that can be sent over in one pass, if, if we need to, to the PCB environment. This is great for maybe you have some complex cut shapes. Maybe your hole locations need to be parametric to the assembly, or the board shape itself needs to be parametric to the assembly. You know, that's, that's information we can build in. And then next, we're going to actually communicate this to the board side. And this, this kind of uh, readout for the projects, every time we go back and forth, we can add detailed notes so we can see exactly what changes have happened when. And we can even create states of those changes in, on the PCB side so that they can be reverted back to if need be. So a good way of tracking that communication. And those parts are native. Now I'm in the PCB side. I'm going to go ahead and open the project that was created in Mechanical. I've added a default board, and I get a message saying, hey, there's been some changes recommended by the Mechanical individual. Do you want to accept? I say recommended because all those changes can be individually accept, accepted or ignored. So if I didn't like the cutout, I could ignore the cutout. But here I am in PCB. I've got the enclosure. I've got the board shape. I've got the mounting holes. I know that that's all parametrically um, created from, from the mechanical assembly. 
I see a message, go ahead and add any critical components that are mechanically relevant. So I'm gonna just go ahead and add all the connectors in this case. Now, this was a question in the first place because I want these to be located in the mechanical environment. I don't wanna to have to go back and forth and say, hey, I have to plug this into a battery pack. What's the X, Y positioning and so on. I can just throw them on the board. I can pass it off to the mechanical side and have that be done natively in the assembly. That's exactly what we're gonna do. By the way, in part of that process there, we saw that there was interference with the enclosure. And so you get that feedback in both environments, you can establish interference now. So I'm in the mechanical side, I get the same accept message. I can accept what I want, what I don't want. Uh, in this case, I accepted everything. We go over to the uh, top level assembly and we see those connectors. Not only can we see them, but we can actually position them. So just imagine, what it would take to position this connector into the battery pack. And in mechanical, I can simply drag, drop, I can use mate and fix. Same thing with these harnesses. Uh, the harnesses are off the shelf, they're a specific length. Um, I've got them positioned the way I want, so that's where the connector needs to be. What I notice in this process is that these connectors are actually on the wrong side of the board. And I like to show this because the intent of the collaboration between PCB and mechanical, the idea is to only give tools that are relevant or that should be accessible by the mechanical environment. In other words, we've added a command for flipping connectors, but we do not give them the access to Z height. So they don't necessarily, mechanical environment doesn't have access to, to necessarily 3D dimensional space, but they do have access to moving a component from one side of the board to the other. And that just kind of gives, gives you an understanding of the nature of how this tool is gonna to be developed. So whatever is mechanically relevant, whatever um, needs to be done to solve that mechanical conundrum, those are the tools that we're gonna give. The other thing we can do here is I've fixed these connectors in space because really I've got a bunch of connectors, but only a couple of them are mechanically relevant. So I'm only gonna fix those ones. And that's a way of natively communicating in PCB, which ones are, are mechanically critical. So in other words, in PCB, those will be fixed as well. And so I'll know, hey, this is locked for a reason. Why is it locked? Oh, it's because it's mechanically relevant. And the same thing is true for something that is electrically relevant. I could fix that as well, and that will spark that conversation of, hey, why is this com component locked to where it needs to be? And bottom line is we can get to the end result. We can do all of our, place the rest of our components. We can verify that there's no interference there. Something very painful in PCB design is, is the routing of those components. So really, I want to do that as little as possible. And this is a great workflow for establishing the correct positioning of all my components, especially mechanically critical ones. That way, hopefully I can route fewer times and everything is just a hit of the button to make sure that everybody's updated, they see the latest changes um, and thereby maybe even reducing prototype spins and so on. So how did we solve this mechanical conundrum? Well, we're giving the mechanical environment the tools that they need for the responsibilities they have. Not only are we designing as a project, we get to use native SOLIDWORKS parts. We can grab the outline, board outlines from the assembly itself. We can include any mechanical relevant information on the PCB side and see the interference there as well as that interference in the mechanical. We can establish mounting in the assembly itself, um, board cutouts. You get that trackability of what changes and comments have been made when. And then lastly, we can locate those components that are critically component right within the mechanical assembly. So we mentioned, well, a project needs to be stored, tracked, and revised. And really, it would be ideal if that could be done as a project. So next, we want to investigate, OK, you know, what are things that would be nice to have for uh, project tracking? You know, a common vault. It would be nice to have project serialization, templating, data cards one source of the truth, one place for all of your information to be stored, and how would that affect our workflow? Can we track changes? When we change a state, can somebody be notified automatically who needs to review things and so on? And that's what we're gonna see. We're gonna use PDM in next here. And actually, we mentioned earlier that something else a mechanical individual might need to have access to is flex design. And that is the length of flex. 
So that's what we're going to investigate here next. So our problem in this um, in this assembly is our flex doesn't quite fit. And we're just going to redesign this. And this time, instead of starting our project from the PCB environment or starting from the mechanical environment, we're going to start it in PDM. And so we see, OK, how far does this, this flex cable, rib, ribbon cable, need to go? We jump over to PDM. And we can use the templating and PDM, serialization, and so on to create our project starting project files. So that's going to create our default schematics, board, um, whatever else we want in there. And then we can simply open that in PCB or mechanical. So I've got a flex board here. And uh, I've added the flex region, added some components. And I'm ready for that to be fine-tuned in the mechanical environment. So we're going to go ahead and collaborate that over, give a message. And then in mechanical, I can accept those changes. And I get that board in the mechanical environment. And what's great about this is um, because I can natively adjust that flex, I can, I can very accurately figure out the minimum length required uh, for that region. And in this case, we see that the flex region is on the wrong side of the board. Uh, so we can manipulate that using standard SOLIDWORKS tools um, in order to, to get that to line up the way that we want. And the benefit here is really because we're getting this parametric information, not only can we reduce the, uh, the cycle time between sending information back and forth, it's all parametric, but really we're getting lots of good information in an assembly. We've got a high detailed board. It's got copper information. We've got accurate uh, flex regions and so on. Maybe we have harnessing built into the assembly. We're getting more and more stuff in the assembly environment. What that allows us to do is utilize, to a greater extent, a lot of the SOLIDWORKS tools at our disposal. So what things that come to mind are um, more details in drawings. We can do uh, photorealistic imaging. We can have more complete bill of materials. Uh, we can have um, even assembly instructions and so on. And that's really the point here, is you, if you already have a SOLIDWORKS core, you already have that assembly, why not um, get the benefits of, of, of native collaboration with PCB design, but you're getting more use out of that mechanical tool itself um, because of, of basically the ease of, of communication there. And this is kind of a case in point. I'm, I'm in SOLIDWORKS. I've got... Um, I can use SOLIDWORKS uh, drawing tools or other tools uh, really to my heart's content because all that information is available now. So how we solve the mechanical conundrum? Well, we've added to that project management in PDM. We've added rigid flex adjustments and then kind of sprinkled in some drawing and documentation there at the end. And I kind of want to push the envelope here as well. So we mentioned the third takeaway is uh, really the improvements that are made according to what's seen in industry. What can we add to documentation and, and so on when it comes to mechanical or mechatronic designing? So we want better outputs. We want more information, better feedback. Well, we've touched on this already, detailed drawings. We're in SOLIDWORKS. Now we've got a parametric assembly. I make drawings, those changes are going to be realized. I don't have to restart that drawing all the time, or I don't have to make that drawing in a PCB tool anymore. But what about assembly instructions? So SOLIDWORKS Mechanical has a tool called Composer, for example, and I can utilize that tool to make any assembly instructions, little video animations, um, breakouts. This can be um, all wrapped up in a packet, or this could even be an animation that's available for use um, perhaps by design review or even an assembly itself. But what about professional imaging? You know, today, people wait for prototypes. They, they hire somebody or have an intern take photos, and that becomes part of the marketing material. But wouldn't it be great if you could have that information up front? You didn't have to wait for all the prototyping, the machining, and tooling, and so on. You could just take your assembly itself. You could render that using a tool like Visualize and then use that for your marketing material. And that's what exactly what you see here on the right. Is these are rendered images based off of an assembly. And lastly, I want to talk about thermal validation. 
In other words, we've got all the relevant information in an assembly. Uh, what if we had to make uh, design, design decisions based on thermal properties? Where a fan is, in, is included in an assembly, where the shape and, and locations of any venting. Um, even in this case, we had to decide, uh, we had a little board here. This is actually a real example we built and printed ourselves um, using a nano dimension printer that we, we offer. Um, but essentially our LEDs in this board, um, it, it, our, our driver was getting too hot and when it got too hot, the LEDs shut off. So we had to decide, okay, what, what type of heat, heat sink do we want to use? What is overkill and whatnot in order to get the proper behavior um, for this design? And with thermal simulation, sim flow, electronic cooling, we're able to realize that information very quickly from our design. And we can make those design, design decisions um, based on the information that we get from these simulations. So how are we advancing mechatronic designing? Well, when it comes to quality control, marketing, assembly instruction, documentation, the platform has things like SOLIDWORKS drawing, visualize, and com composer. When it comes to thermal and prototype validation, we can handle that with 3D printing. I mentioned the Dragonfly Nano Dimensions printer um, or even other printers just for uh, assembly fit. Um, that also includes SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, electronic cooling, getting that feedback of of positioning of components, of heat sinks, and so on for your design. And then something I didn't touch as much on in this webinar um, is system design and harnessing. We've got a package that's dedicated just for that, SOLIDWORKS electrical or even electrical routing to, to document those harnesses very efficiently and with more detail than what is traditionally done in sometimes a PCB tool today. So our key takeaways, the inhibitions to product design, what was that? Well, that was the fact that we're designing products. And if we're designing products, we, we need a platform to be able to handle all aspects of that product because we want native information. We don't want reworked duplicate efforts. We don't want a, a fault point in communication being email or trackability or, or what have you. Uh, there was a, a modernized design workflow that we can access because it's so easy to collaborate. You make a small change, you hit, you push that to the environment and pull that into the other environment. So no longer is it more of a linear design where you're getting completed boards or you're getting completed assemblies. You can both work simultaneously and both update each other's environment with the latest information as you go. How have we advanced mechatronics designing? We're advancing mechatronics designing with improved documentation, improved feedback for information to make your engineered design uh, choices in your um, product designing. And all this leads to a reduction in errors, improved trackability, reduced time, and even prototype reduction. If you've improved communication, you've reduced prototypes. And that really, a prototype in itself, if you could save one prototype a year, uh, that's gonna go a long way in lead time. It's gonna go a long way in even cost factor. Um, and that's what we're able to do with collaboration of SOLIDWORKS PCB and uh, SOLIDWORKS Mechanics. So with that, does anyone have any questions? I see someone asked about um, Altium specifically. They saw some literature related to that in collaboration. Uh, yes, we've got a product called SOLIDWORKS PCB Connector. And that product also, um, everything that you've seen here, uh, with the exception of a little bit of PDM stuff, um, is, is able to be realized using Altium and SOLIDWORKS PCB Connector. That'll allow you to communicate bidirectionally with SOLIDWORKS as well. So the uh, SOLIDWORKS PCB, at the heart of it, it was developed in, in, a, in an effort with Altium. And part of that is where those two products came from. So the collaboration exists for both SOLIDWORKS and for Altium. Both products can realize everything you've seen here today. Any other questions? Somebody asked a question, is it possible to add electrical circuit and electrical tracks directly on any 3D object? So that is where um, basically the way you look at it is um, what, what is the responsibility of the mechanical individual and what's the responsibility of the PCB individual? 
So anything that's the PCB's individual's responsibility, we're reserving those tasks to be done in SOLIDWORKS PCB. Anything that might be res the responsibility of both parties or the mechanical individual, that's that's where we're giving them the rights to make those edits. So electrical connections, that's going to be a PCB design factor. So that's going to be done on the SOLIDWORKS PCB side or I guess the Altium side as well. Um, that can collaborate through to mechanical. And it'll it'll build the traces for you in mechanical, but you will not be able to edit them intelligently and send them back, um, because that's that's a function of, of of PCB placement and routing. So great question. Any other questions? Somebody else asked, what about thickness of the board? Uh, so that that would also fall into the realms. Layer stack is done on the PCB side. Um, so that layer stack communicates through as a proper thickness in mechanical, um, but as far as editing the layer stack in mechanical, that's going to be reserved for the PCB side. Somebody asked, do we have any any demos of the PCB design tool? Yes, we do. Um, so that's something you can reach out to your sales rep. We'd be happy to do a demo of that. Um, we also have a um, kind of a, a practice project that you can access and we'd be happy to meet with you that you can kind of get your hands wet with the tool after a demo. Um, and then if you check out our YouTube page, um, there's, we've got quick start videos and we can also, we've got videos there available for uh, the PCB side as well. And it's it's schematic capture, it's board layout, it's got auto routing uh, tools if, if you like to, to start designs off with an auto router. You can design in hierarchy. Um, so it, it's very capable. It's, it's linked to real time um, manufacturer data. Uh, so you can get feedback. Is this part still in stock? You can do a price comparison from one part to the next and, and all that is, is real time to the manufacturer's website. Any other questions? So we, we've we've really sh focused on the the mechanical collaboration because that's really what's unique to this tool, unique to this process. Um, but we'd be happy to to show you what's available on the PCB side itself. And actually, SolidWorks PCB is standalone. You don't need the mechanical environment for it to operate. Uh, you can finish board design. You can do all your normal layer stack and everything else within with just the PCB tool. Okay, last last call for questions. So I want to thank you guys for your time. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to reach out to your sales rep. Um, and my, my phone's here and email address as well. Um, if, if you have any questions later on, we'd be happy to address those. And just a reminder, this recording will be sent out and available. And I'd like to thank you for your time.